Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? Hope it's fantastic. I forgot to mention yesterday that I finally finished reading The Great Hunt this weekend. Uh, Great Hunt is book two of The Wheel of Time. If you look back like six months, I had declared that I was going to read uh, the whole of Wheel of Time. Uh, I've never made it through all 14 books. I've only ever made it to about book eight. And my full intent then was to read uh, books one, two, and three before the show came out and then read as much as I could before the end of the year. And I just couldn't. Uh, I got through book one. The Great Hunt was fun. It's a fast-paced kind of, uh, you know, interesting book. Book two is much slower, much more... Um, intricate I guess is the word I'd like to use and I just stalled and I just I didn't read for a couple of months actually I think like I don't think I really read through November or December uh like novels I read a lot I read a lot but I didn't read novels of any kind um so I got hung up and uh I've been playing a lot of video games recently and then decided that it was time to read some more because I'm I'm kind of waiting on some new video games to come out and, um, yeah, so I picked the Kindle up and started reading, and I blew through the last probably 60% of The Great Hunt this weekend, and I'm already halfway through book three, The Dragon Reborn. So, book two. Why did it take me so long to read it? A whole lot happens in book two, and also nothing happens in book two. That's why. It's a kind of a boring book. Um, I forgot how much exposition Robert Jordan writes uh, to a modern writer, to, a, to an author who goes and researches how to write today. The common thread through all of it is show, don't tell. And the idea of that is if a character feels a certain way or a character wants something, you should show that. Or if a character needs information, you should show them getting that information. You shouldn't tell the reader what the character is feeling or tell the reader... Uh, but also, you, that it also applies to scenes. Um, and Robert Jordan doesn't adhere to any of that. He tells you a lot of things, and he doesn't show you much. Uh, and The Great Hunt is a great example of that. There's a whole lot of just sitting around and talking. And there's a whole lot of... I've com kind of completely forgot. There's a whole lot of really... In my opinion out-of-character dialogue, meaning that a person who has no real reason to be asking a question or to be uh, informed by another person, especially a higher-up, will say something, and then the higher-up will go into this whole dissertation about the history of the world and how this happens and that happens. And it feels really weird now, as an, as an older person reading it. As a younger person, I didn't recognize it. But as an older person, I just see so many times in this book a character stops to just say some bullshit that the reader needs to know that the characters in the world don't need to know or it's just not important or it's completely out of place for that time and and Robert Jordan hides a lot of it through oh they got real close and whispered or whatever and it's kind of almost laughable but at the same time it's I say that knowing that if everybody does it then maybe that's just a characteristic of their age maybe it's a characteristic of their age and their meaning the age of the setting not the age of the person maybe it's just characteristic of the people in this book to just say whatever's on their mind all of the time they just narrate constantly because that's kind of how it feels like they just if, if a person just kind of grumps their fists and huffs a little bit then somebody's going to give them this two paragraph tirade about how whatever happened happened and it it's a lot that's a lot of this book really not much happens here we spend a whole long time walking across the world only to find out that's not uh, how we're going to get there. We're just going to jump ahead and just skip all of that. And, and, and there's, so there's a time jump in this book. There's, there's just, it's a very slow trod to get to where we're headed. And that is getting to the dragon, right? Getting to figure out what exactly is going on in the world. And the book doesn't, do a whole lot of that. It sets up a whole lot. That's part, you know, and parcel of being kind of 
a book two. It's a setup book. Book three, a bunch of shit's going to happen. Now, in book two, a bunch of stuff, I said not much happens, but what happens in book two needed to happen. We needed to set up some characters. We needed to introduce some characters. Uh, we needed to to divide and and... We needed to divide some characters, and we needed to bring some characters back together. There was a whole lot that needed to happen. Uh, it just it happened amid a whole bunch of exposition, a whole bunch of vomit, you know, just this huge dialogue segments where people were just blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of that. But it's still a good book. Like, I enjoyed it. I think I ranked it four stars. I don't. It's definitely not a five-star book. I, I might even say it's a three-star. It's just a book. Like, it's a book. And I think that in any series, especially a series of 14 books, there's going to be some, some portions of that that are just, okay, I read that, right? And I feel like that's pretty much The Great Hunt. It's pretty much just, okay, can we move on now? And the funny thing is that I remembered most of the things in the book. I remembered, um, to be spoilery, I remembered that Egwene and Elaine got collared by this Sean Chan, the Sean Chan. I remembered all of that. But in my head, from reading this 20 years ago, I remembered it being this big, like, oh my god, and they, and they, you know, they spent, like, a large amount of time collared up, and, and, no, they don't. Like, it's not really that big of a part of the book. Yeah, it's a big of a part of that character. For Egwene, especially, she is, like, PTSD for a very long time over what happened to her wearing that collar but in the book it's just a couple of chapters and it's gone it, it's not this big huge thing that I thought it was everything that happens on Tomon Head was not this big huge thing I thought it was I remembered it being that being the focus of the book it wasn't that was like the last six chapters the first 30 chapters are just kind of meandering and let's learn a little bit more about the world and let's have characters just tell us all of the stuff that is completely out of place when they say it. And so, stuff happened. Uh, we, we progressed. <laughs> um, I have, there, there, was a, there was some instances where characters would get introduced and I would, and I had a recollection that that character wasn't what we were being introduced to, meaning that Robert Jordan really likes to flip characters around on you. Um, I think maybe he was, he was maybe the first author that I read where he did a lot of that, where characters were presented to you in one way only to find out later they were something completely different. And it goes in multiple directions, like bad guys are not necessarily bad guys and good guys are not necessarily good guys. And he, and he flips those, those people a lot. Uh, and so there were some characters in here when I saw them, when I read their names, I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure that's this person, or I'm pretty sure that's this. And later on, we find out, yeah, some of that is true. So he sets up a lot of mystery, and I think he does it well. There's one character in particular in here, I, I'm not going to give spoilers for anybody who hasn't read on ahead, that um, I think he sets up this character very, very well as a mystery. As a person that shows up, does something crazy, really changes the the outlook or the future of of a specific character and then that person goes off and does something and, you know and then you don't know where they are for a while and then they show up again and that character uh, eventually gets revealed uh to be exactly what that character is but for a long time it's this like wait and everybody in the book is talking about her everybody has seen her Every, or, you know it, it's a, it's a you know everybody knows something is out but nobody knows that you know Everybody has seen the character or talked about the character, but nobody has figured out that the person they've all been involved with is the same person. They don't figure that out till much, much later. That's fun. So um, it, it was it was fun to read it uh, just because, uh, I guess, nostalgia reason reasons. But the book as a whole is pretty boring, and honestly. I have recollections of feeling the same about book seven as I just recently felt about this book. I feel like book seven is just kind of eh, and you just have to read it because there's there's a couple of key moments, and that's kind of how I felt about this book. There's not as much to learn from this book because everything, again, Robert Jordan will make sure that he reintroduces everything to you later on, and 
so everything that we've learned in this book, we will relearn again. He's not, you know, it's not like you have to read this book to continue. You could literally just skip the book and he's going to retell it to you anyway. Uh, in fact, he retells you things in the same book and that can be really annoying. Um, especially there's a couple of key things in here that, that make a couple of key ideas that re that make a few appearances in here and he explains it every single time it shows up and it's tiring sometimes it's like yeah 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 and uh i i find myself a lot of times skimming and i know i shouldn't because if you've if you read if you've read book one you'll know that there's this flashback sequence that isn't a isn't super obvious that it's a flashback sequence until you reread it again and you literally reread a couple of those same paragraphs again later, but they're slightly different. And a lot of times I feel like if you skim too much, there are sentences that change in some of these sections that, that, that seem to be repeating, but they're not really repeating. They're kind of repeating. And that is, again, the theme of the Wheel of Time. So... Book two, finished. I'm halfway through book three. I'm enjoying my read of book three. It, it definitely, it starts off with the same slow pace that book two ended with, uh, but it picks up pretty quick and things start moving as, as, as events start unfolding. So look forward to that probably later this week or maybe next week. I don't know. Have you been reading anything lately? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is Kelvin and is a noun meaning a temperature scale in which absolute zero is zero degrees and there are no negative values. When we questioned Rachel about her purse suggesting that it's a knockoff, she gave us a stare cold enough to measure on the Kelvin scale. Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N. Kelvin is, yeah, absolute zero, which they don't define here, which would be the, the you know, when particles can't move or something. <laughs>